Welcome to the final episode of our Phoenix Dawn Command series, everyone. We had a lot of fun with this game, and we get into some really great discussion this episode, as well as some fantastic fanfic. So, to get you there sooner, let's just dive into our announcements. Just a couple quick announcements, actually, it looks like. First up, you can still get a copy of the latest version of Chimera over on the Itch page at play.chimera.games. This game has always been an unforgettable experience every time I've tried it out, and it just keeps getting better. Creating a world together and one that can be as weird as you want it to be is just such a joy. And then seeing what unique characters and stories you can come up with as a group, it's a remarkable experience. So check it out at play.chimera.games and check out one of the two actual play streams at twitch.chimera.games or capeandblade.chimera.games to see how it plays. A new version is right around the corner, so it's a great time to hop on board and be ready for when that drops. The other announcement I have is that the latest Losers A Love Story dropped on Saturday on the Horror Borealis podcast feed. It was the penultimate episode, which means there is only one more episode left in this mini-series retelling of Stephen King's It through playing Monster of the Week supplement Back to Dairy by Christine Previs. Uh, we've all put a lot into the show, and I am really happy to be able to present it to everyone. Content warnings galore, though. It is not a show for minors or the faint of heart, as it gets a bit creepy you know, being a horror story after all. I don't think there's anything else to announce right now. So let's sit back, relax, and listen to this discussion episode with guest Neil Powell. Enjoy. Welcome back to our discussion episode. Last time we created our characters for Phoenix Dawn Command. This episode we will be discussing the character creation process. We are very thrilled to welcome back Neil Powell, co-host of Diamnastics and Whelmed the Unjustice Files. Neil, do you want to go ahead and reintroduce yourself again for everyone at home? And tell us a little bit about the character you made in our last episode. Certainly. It's still me. It's still Neil. And like was mentioned, if you head over to your podcatcher of choice, which we've established as a real person out there with a the net catching <laughs> pods and bringing them back to my phone, you can find me on DMnastics Whelmed or Dungeon Master's blog. And for everything else, I'm on Twitter at Jotmoniac, Jack of All Trades, Master of None. And last week, I created Canis, a bitter phoenix who basically was a young boy and um, died a death they didn't want because their life was cut short. It made them bitter. It made them angry. And after hundreds of years of battling in the crucible um, to finally um, step forth recently into this wing, which we have named No Second Chances, <laughs> um, which I have no idea how that would come out and play. Um, but I took traits such as Reckless, um, basically, if someone attacks me, I will attack them um, and then not be able to defend it. Barbarian, Feral, Thrill Seeker, and Infamous. And Infamous is my favorite because basically I present as, still as a young boy, but that young boy that was the troublemaker and everyone that sees me kind of sees that when they look at me um, until they see the giant axe that is taller than I am. So um, that'll probably make them second guess or just be really scared. One of the two, but that is, that is Canis. Um, yeah, I think that about, that about covered it. Yeah. Ryan, do you want to tell us about your completely surprising, totally <laughs> unlike you at all character? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Um, so I created a devoted, uh, that's my Phoenix uh, school, uh, named Adora, um, which uh, goes along with the character who is very self-sacrificing um, and inspiring. Um, 
Adora uh, used to be a noble shaman for a village. And uh, at the time, he had uh, sacrificed himself in order to uh, save the rest of his village. And uh, since then, she has come back as um, uh, a, a devoted protector of everyone. Um, I've got traits such as noble, shaman, inspiring, seen this before, uh, and savior. And I think it'll be, uh, it would be really interesting because uh, they are uh, trying to uh, save the world and find their spouse who they had direct the village uh, to safety uh, while they stayed back to perish to give them time. Fun stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Amelia, uh, what about your character? Uh, I picked the Shrouded School. Uh, my character's name is Lilith. She was someone um, with some kind of power. I don't think we really established what. Um, who actually knew that the dread was pretty bad and maybe didn't tell anybody um, and now has to deal with that, um, but definitely doesn't want anybody to know that she could have stopped this um, or could have at least mitigated some of it. Um, she is, uh, let's see, what did I take here for some of these talents? I took um, Hidden Secrets. Um, and I have, uh, psychometry, mysterious, brilliant deduction, grim determination, and my personal favorite, disturbing insights, where I get to make people around me just, uh, reveal disturbing secrets. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm so excited about this group of characters. <laughs> It's a it's a nice motley crew of uh, of characters. I love it. Yeah, I'm excited to see how no second chances mm -hmm. <laughs> deals with some of this. Stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and dive right into our discussion segment that we call D twenty for your thoughts. D twenty for your thoughts. So, in this segment, we talk to our guests about their thoughts on character creation in this game and games in general, um, how it relates to the system and uh, their their overall process. But our first question uh, about you as a designer or person who likes to hack games, where do you feel like your best ideas come from? How do they present themselves to you? Mm, I think... Mm, that's a great question. I've already read it, so I don't know why I'm so, I feel so, <laughs> I'm so surprised. I, it's um, a new one for us that we've only been okay. asking recently, and I really like it. I mm -hmm. yeah, I love hearing from people about like where ideas come from because I certainly don't have any. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So I think it. I think wow, it ties it ties deep, and I, there's too many connections, I guess. But one of the biggest things is like my dad was always a car guy like the the penultimate car guy mm -hmm. and so there was always a tool for the job and it was always one of those things where you, you see those tool those garages those workshops where you're like there's no way that any one human would require any of these but that's the thing is eventually there's the right tool for the job mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and so then it's also that going to the that like jack of all trades master of none mentality my thing is always like I just should always just be learning and just putting more tools in. And so then if I never use any of it, that I'll probably still be fine because I had it and I know why I didn't use it. Um, so that's usually where a lot of my things come from. Like the thing I posted on Twitter yesterday was just like a smattering of what my last 24 hours looked like. And I mean, thankfully with the power of the internet. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so within the past 24 hours this is this is what i posted yesterday i watched the new mortal Kombat. i finished birds of prey i started the joker i played some diablo 3 seasonal hardcore um i bought and opened a pack of vivid voltage pokemon cards with kid 2 bought and read uh the new my little pony comic with kid 1 and did more um so that's really my personal approach is that there's something to gain from everything. Mm -hmm. And so just put it all in there and see what comes out the other side. 
Yeah. I, I remember uh, a couple of years ago you were doing uh, from LP to RP mm-hmm. as well, which was really interesting. Yep. yep. So then, yeah, taking album covers and making fifth edition content out of those. Because, like, those, I mean, if art's worth a thousand, if, if a piece of art is worth a thousand words, those thousand words could certainly be RPG stuff. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> I really like that point, though, of like, even if I don't use it, I know why I didn't use it. And mm. I, I appreciate the idea that like, none of that is wasted, right? That like, even the time that you spent reading the My Little Pony comic is like worth something. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think that is something that I personally would like to grow to appreciate more, um, that those time spent on things that are, you know superfluous or you know whatever our capitalist society wants to call them um that they do have value and even if we don't go on to like put them into something we still you know at least learned what we don't want or whatever that they still have some kind of value well even like having a person at your table where it's like their their like i don't know their gym jam is totally my Little Pony. Right. But then you even just having like that individual comic as a reference point of even just being able to better connect with that other person. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It, then there it was. That's what it was for. I mean, and maybe that never comes up, but maybe it does. Mm-hmm. And then that in doctrine or not in doctrine, but like connects you with that person more than you would have ever been able to without it. So you're telling me that knowing that much about unicorns and Pokemon and Mario and <laughs> all of these things <laughs> hopefully will minute. come up. At some Are you in my house? Because it sounds <laughs> oh like you're also gosh. in my house. If I hear yeah. another word about let's go easy, I'm mm. going to scream. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we were doing Sword and Shield and then we eventually jumped to uh, Mario Kart. So. Oh, yeah. My son has been obsessed with Mario since he was like five. Mm. He is mm-hmm. 10 now. Um, my daughter is reading all of the Phoebe and her unicorn books, which there are 13 of them so far. It's just really, it's really a lot. <laughs> my, my son has mastered Kirby Dreamland 3. Oh, yeah, there's uh, audio the somewhere Nintendo. of you explaining it as you were playing it while you're trying to record. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he, he can he can 100% that game with secrets and all from start to finish. Uh, by himself now. Wow. Uh, he's five and a half. It's it's wild. I want to have some of that kind of like devotion that kids have to the things that they love. Mm-hmm. Like I have things that I love, but I will never love anything as much as my son loves Super Mario. Like mm-hmm. I, I won't. I don't have <laughs> that kind of ability to be that passionate. Like... There aren't enough hours in the day or enough energy. Mm-hmm. It, I, I long for that. <laughs> we just have to get rid of capitalism first. Maybe mm. that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> On that note. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, 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 another question that's uh, fairly new. Um, what do you look for in a system as far as character creation goes? Like what pieces need to be there for a great character creation experience for you um i think this one does well of helping that process along um i mean i just had a section in the book that straight up said character creation process Mm -hmm. um sometimes it's not that i mean D D is not that straightforward no um it can be if you're using a tool outside of the player's handbook but if you're just cracking open the player's handbook that's a it's a rough go um because you you kind of get it but you kind of don't um and so it's almost the bits just enough you need but then there's more if you need to look at it whereas it's like if it's too little or it's too much um i think that really it hurts character creation when that happens mm-hmm. and then adding narrative elements directly into that character creation process with the right questions um is helpful too because i could walk away from a D character and have nothing um but a character yeah if if that makes sense no it absolutely makes sense because with D, a there's such thing as creating a, a bad mechanically character mm-hmm. if you don't know what you're doing um and and also um the really the only thing you have is that what personality bonds and 
and and whatever that that last four things that you can roll on tables for uh because of your background to determine yep. who this person really is aside from what they can do right bonds traits ideals and flaws but nobody uses them so yeah right <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's really interesting. Uh, yeah, having that guide to to guide you like this, do this first, uh, and then that goes right into this next step, and then this next step. You just follow this list, and and you've got your character done, and you also know about this person that you just created uh, is is absolutely fantastic to have in a game. I agree. How do we feel like character creation in this game stacks up against? other games that we've played uh first i think it's super funny to say stacked up because <laughs> we, built, we built a deck of cards so i'm a big fan <laughs> of that but i think it does i think it does well because the other thing i also look for as kind of the permanent gm dm marshal whatever term um is end up being used is does it give me easy threads to pull I mean, this obviously did mm-hmm. with the question. Like all three of us commented on that in the last episode of like, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, oh that'll, there. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'll never get yank, yanked on. Um, so I think that that's another thing where, where it does really well. And then, um, yeah, I, it's fun because it's different. Like I have my character in my hand in this stack of cards and I can, I, I can kind of always see who they are to a degree and then figuring out more of that as, as play goes on. So I think it does really well. And there are a lot of elements that can be pulled out. Like those are all like the questions at the end, like taking some essence of those questions and asking them at the end of any character creation process would be good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it, it makes it easy um, for people who haven't, really done a lot of character creation before because you are just pulling cards out of a stack you can Mm -hmm. hand somebody and say pick one or two of these you know Mm -hmm. find the ones with these symbols on them and they can put a character together Mm -hmm. um but i think even as a seasoned role player and certainly a very seasoned character creator there was still plenty in here to keep me interested um and it was still really easy to build a character that i wanted to play um, even with those like limited number of choices, mm-hmm. um, because it's not it's not as wide open that way when you only have so many cards to choose from. Mm. Um, but even doing that, Ryan and I were still able to make exactly our very much personal <laughs> types of characters. <laughs> Yeah, and I the thing, and I see it going both ways, but like I, I see it as an advantage, and that you know that's kind of what we're mentioning here is that the finite nature of the choices mm-hmm. is really interesting because we're, you're guaranteed to in some way or in one way certainly create a unique character at the table, but then in theory, if you looked at the bigger umbrella of Phoenix Dawn Command campaigns or wings, like your wing will inevitably be very unique mm-hmm. because I, I, I can't, I can't again, we certainly can because we all, we all have our own set of cards, but if we were at a table, I can't choose the same traits you did. Right. It's not possible. You took the card off the table. Um, and put it into your your deck, mm-hmm. right. um, which which I think is great because even even figuring out what the card itself means of like barbarian, okay, so then w- just the absolute litany of ideas that that could be, or even Ryan the noble card, like is it noble at heart? Is it noble by stat like station? Like what mm-hmm. what does it mean? Yeah. So yes, I, I really like that. Uh, I had no idea what sort of character even you could create going into this. Um, And even halfway through the process, I, I didn't really know who this character was. I was like just picking stuff that sounded good to the utility of the character. Mm -hmm. And then once all the pieces were there, it just kind of all clicked into place. Like now I'm looking at these descriptions, I'm looking at the flavor text and these questions are being asked of me through this process and now it's all oh now i have a vision of who this person was in life and who they are coming back as uh in this their first rebirth which is just interesting because because most other games um i usually would either go in with a concept like okay i want to create this type of character 
with this sort of backstory, how do I do that um, in this game? Or like, I want to create like a going to Dungeons and Dragons. I want to cl- create a cleric and then I'm going to build a backstory that fits because I can create the cleric however I want and it would have no impact on whatever backstory I come up with, right? Right. Whereas in this game, literally the choices you make are part of your backstory. Mm-hmm. Well, and once we get into advancement, it gets even more like that. Yeah. Yep. So um, how how does the process of character creation then reinforce the feel of uh, Phoenix Dawn Command while uh, setting expectations for play? Yeah, I think every element of it, yeah. kind of like what, kind of like what you said from the very beginning of like I've chosen bitter. Here are the core things you as a bitter can do. Then your very first step is choosing a a permanent rank one thing that you can do. Now you're adding your rank one trait from bitter, bitter, but it's also then like, oh, okay, wait, because it's the exact question you asked, like, okay, but why does it say one? grace at the top of my card it's like oh well because everything is going to be about pulling cards and making spreads and so even those very first choices you're making are setting the tone of like what you're going to be doing in play even the mechanical aspects of the traits you subsequently choose because again each of those are one grace or one strength for me Mm -hmm. but then from there you know everything is i feel like guiding you towards play in those choices you're making as a as part of character creation. Hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that. Cause I think like a lot of the cards too, like as we were picking them, you know, I'm looking at it going, okay, you know, this card counts as like in an attack spread counts as five or, you know, like that kind of stuff. And it's like, I'm already picking strategically what I'm going to do with this particular card that I've chosen in hmm. a game. Yeah. It is interesting because it, you you could pick everything based on what it what it's called, right? Uh-huh. Like I want to be inspiring. I don't care what it does. So right. I picked the inspiring card, right? Um, whereas I, I went through and picked based on what it does, and then figured out what it said afterwards. Um, but a lot of these are like use it in the moment, and what about this moment tells you about your character uh which is just super interesting to me like not even thinking about your character's past in certain ways until the moment presents itself to use one of these cards in it yeah and like that flavor test text asks that question of like why you know where do you was it the one of yours that it's like, where yeah. do you know this from, or something yeah, like that? Yeah, seen this before. Mm-hmm. Like, where where have you seen it before? Um, you know, did you first encounter it in your first life? Did you study it in the Crucible? That sort of stuff, and and asking those questions in the middle of a combat, or in the middle of a mystery, or in the middle of you know something epic, uh, is is a really interesting kind of like pause and character introspection that it sounds like that's going to be a big part of kind of play is building upon your character. Mm-hmm. I like it. Mm-hmm. So our next question that we had on here was entirely about character sheets. And well, this game doesn't really yeah. have character sheets, does it? No, no. Uh, there, yeah, like, there are no character the, sheets, which it's just in your hand. It is your hand. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, you can't mess them up, so that's nice. Right. Mm. But, I mean, it's interesting because uh, almost quite literally half of my hand is stuff that I'll hold on to for the entire game, mm-hmm. right? And the other half is stuff that I'll be playing, like yeah. as if I were playing a card game or Magic the Gathering or whatever. Um, yeah, so then... So then the only other thing that we would add to the deck at the, at this point, if we were going to start play would be two twos, two threes, two fours of each of your grace. And for both of you intellect that you would incorporate in there. So they're just raw value cards, Mm -hmm. um, not, not related to anything else, but, but other than that, yeah, everything exactly. Like you said, these are the ones that you would just basically sit out. So like for me, I have these, the four core and the rank one, and I would just basically have those set out, um, to observe, uh, and then the bitter acts kind of as your token, um, for, play but the rest would be yeah literally in and out of your hand as you play them during the game 
That's really interesting. And when when we're talking about decks, each person has their own personal deck, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, which is effectively an extension of your character sheet, so to speak, yeah. uh, in in this metaf- metaphorical sort of sense, um, which is really interesting because then it it really does turn into this like pseudo deck building sort of game. Yeah. Yep. Which is. It's a lot of fun in practice. Like, yeah, I can imagine. And especially because some of those cards have, you know, the, um, what are they called? Not talents, but. Traits. Traits. Yeah, because some of them have the traits on them. It's like, do I want to put that in a spread or do I want to save it for later? Or do I want to, you know. Yeah. Like how mm-hmm. you put down those cards that you have in your hand too becomes really interesting. Mm-hmm. Very cool. So. um what do you what do we think then uh is one of the biggest flaws of character creation in this this system and what do we think is one of the best parts so i think the i I think my answer is for both because i think that finite nature um is is a plus and a minus Mm -hmm. it it does create this unique thing but you could also certainly get into some conflict of like why because i could make a bitter that is fundamentally completely different from a bitter that either of you would make but then you go, we're not going to both play bidders at the same table. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing is that those choices do get really nebulous. And I can see that being tough for some people to process through of just what does barbarian mean? Because even the bottom of mind says Scavi Raider, Grim Walled Warrior, or simply trained in the wilds of your crucible. Mm-hmm. Um, so sometimes I think that those there is the finite nature coupled with the limitless nature of what your character can be. And I can, mm-hmm. I see that both as the best part for me, but I can also see that being really frustrating for some other people. That makes sense. Uh, one of the, the parts that I liked the most about this was um, the, the trait names and uh, flavor text defining who you were. Mm -hmm. Uh, either before death or, or in the crucible. Um, I really enjoy how it all just clicked together once I had a good selection of those cards. But yeah, I think, I think the thing that I was, uh, a little, uh, on the fence about was that, that there's only so many of these, right? It, Mm -hmm. it, It did kind of feel like if you had a bunch of tables, in a book and you're like you can you can pick from these and that's it you can't make up your own stuff sort of deal it would be nice if there was a way to uh like create your own talents or whatever and then utilize those um but in a game about cards that's hard to that's hard to do without more cards right yeah so I think there's sense. enough there, though, that it didn't feel too much like that. I mean, maybe after you've played it like a ton and ton and ton. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, there's so many, there's still even so many different combinations of them that mm-hmm. it would take a long time before you really got there. Yeah, absolutely. It's our favorite section of the show now. It's our, our fan fiction section. Mm-hmm. What's our story? What's the, <laughs> what is the story of No Second Chances? I... I think it's a story of heartbreak. I mean, it certainly sounds that way, doesn't it? Mm hmm. We didn't make nice stories. No, we didn't. I mean, it sounds like um, I'll, I'll be constantly trying to chase a chance with my spouse. Mm. And um, we've got these secrets of yours, Amelia. Mm hmm. And and we've got this uh, childhood uh, ne'er do well. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis the menace over here. Uh-huh. But I think it, it's that like just I because th- I think the, even the idea of the no second chances. I think all three of us are going to get us into deeper trouble 
for the goals that we have. Mm-hmm. It's interesting that I'm not necessarily the only one that would do it. Like, I think we're all going to strive to go and take that next step. Is it to find the answers? Is it to fight through the answers? Is it to find your spouse? Like all three of us are, we're going to die. Um, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. I mean, that's the point, but right. I think all three of us are going to push the group further like there's no there's not going to be a hesitancy and again that goes back to the idea that of the wing being called no second chances Mm -hmm. so what uh, this is probably the the best portion uh to to define this what is the dread in our game Mm. yeah what what took us all out because we all talked about it yeah hmm. yeah i mean is it you know environmental is it a uh an enemy of some sort and it could certainly be different aspects for for the different characters because part of it is also like the more I think about it, the more I think of like the skin changer thing. Like the literally, I'm literally the boy who cried used to cry wolf, and then there were actual werewolves, right? And no one no one believed me, and then the entire town was wiped out. Mm-hmm. And then does that look like do do I eventually lean that way or lean further away from it when I start to take on more ranks? Do I eventually become um I think more of like the worgen in World of Warcraft mm-hmm. like it's it, it is a um werewolf person but they look dapper as all get out because they have these amazing suits <laughs> and and they're eloquent and and they have society and and mm-hmm. things like that so um so for for i think for mine it's definitely the skin like the skin changer um appearing more as a werewolf mm. that makes sense uh it it would be interesting if it was um something that preyed on the fears of the communities that it attacked oh mm-hmm. So like maybe maybe your community was, you know, wolves are the the biggest issue. You know, you don't go out after dark in the woods because there's there's packs of wolves out there that are hungry. And, oh, so I and, live in L.A. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. There are actual packs of wolves in L.A. If you ever go down there and you hang out for any amount of time, you'll actually hear them. And like, oh, interesting. Uh, you got. Yeah. Like small animals do not leave them outside. Yeah. Oh, that's wild. Can you hunt them? Um, I don't know why you couldn't. I, I don't think anyone would stop you. I mean, because here you can get a license to hunt wolves. You can only go yeah. do so many, but you can mm-hmm. you can mm-hmm. hunt wolves in Wisconsin. For population control and whatnot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Idaho just is trying to pass killing 90% of the ones they have. I just saw that. Oh, wow. Yeah. News. I mean, that's a constant uh, back and forth, I think, here is how yeah. many is okay to kill. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can hunt wolves here. So that goes to the idea, though, like the biggest fear. So then, like, what did the dread look like for your character? Yeah, my i I want to say mine was probably the undead, fearing death itself, in a way. Because throughout this whole like exercise, I'm just thinking of like these hordes of uh, undead minions that mm-hmm. are kind of piling through right mm-hmm. so I, I wonder if uh if my community had a, a reverence for the dead and it was kind of a sacred uh thing and you know people were buried in a very specific fashion um and people coming back to life in a unnatural sort of way is kind of very frightening yeah uh which then adds another uh dagger for the the uh marshal to use uh Mm -hmm. for when i finally get to see people from my village again having died already i think for me it would be famine Mm. because i think that like come from a part of society where like the biggest fear is like any kind of austerity and having to like give up our lifestyle in any way Mm -hmm. Um, and so having to be faced with like nothing would be confounding and terrifying Mm -hmm. oh that's an interesting combo Mm -hmm. yeah undead hungry wolves (laughs) yep done (laughs) literal skin and bones Mm -hmm. oh i don't like that 
but I love it. <laughs> it's great, but I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's frightening. So I guess what is our mission then? Is it to just fight back the dread? Is it to save people? Is it uh, what 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 are we what are we doing? What is this campaign's goal, I guess? I think I I mean initially fighting it back sounds right, but I think it would certainly develop into getting more answers and giving those answers away. Um I think the collective the collective group feels like that that could be a really big goal was figuring out why it happened and so like for my character so other people aren't cut short for yours so that they're not separated Mm -hmm. um and like just 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 figuring it out maybe just trying to help people not experience the same Mm. dread that we do that makes sense um so we're giving other people second chances but not ourselves Mm -hmm. Ooh. Um, and what's one, like, cause this game, from what I understand, can have some of the most epic fights because mm-hmm. yep. you're jumping into death yep. effectively. What's, what's one absolutely epic encounter that our group will encounter in this campaign? Like what something big, right? I mean... We cert- we certainly have. Uh, so in the intro, there there is the one that I mean, it, it it's funny that the the way we're describing it, like the intro, plays into it really really well. So there's the harvester who basically takes the fears of others and like man helps manifest them. Like so, I talked about like my bitter dying because he jumped off the banister. Because part of it is also you're coming down this banister and it's like this obsidian tower that's built in there, and you basically see these images and this smoke is on the ground and like you literally face your fears as you're coming down the stairwell. Mm. And so like, and then it's the manifestation of those things. Um, so I think, I think that's that epic battle is that like they're man, they're fully manifested. And then we're all basically re-experiencing part of our first deaths. Oh, oh. dang. That sounds pretty cool. I like, I that. like that. Yeah. This is, this is a pretty sweet group. Yep. It really is. Oh, and and it's only gonna get sweeter because level advancement is the best thing. Yes. <laughs> well, that sounds like a good segue. Should we should we get into our advancement discussion then and uh, and take it up a level? I think we should. We should. I'm so excited. Awesome. Take it up a level. Take it up a level. So in this segment, we cover character advancement and character growth. How does the character level up in Phoenix Dawn Command? What changes mechanically when that happens? They die. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, they do. (laughs) Yeah, so it's not, you're not gaining resources that you spend. You're not gaining experience as you go. You're not, um, I mean, in a lot of ways, if you want to use the term milestone leveling, um, it's certainly that because you died. (laughs) You died to death. (laughs) Um, and then one of the most interesting things that, w- that I know I alluded to previously is that the advancement is related to the death you die mm. and the way you feel about those those deaths. Because when we describe the schools, those are the same questions you end up asking when you have that death. Um, did like so even going through the idea of like we could all certainly die in that moment, too. That's the other thing is we could go on a mission and all of us die. Mm-hmm. And then we fail, but we still come back. Mm -hmm. And so what if we all failed to those, um, the, to something similar to what our first death was. So I would likely walk away still very bitter. Mm -hmm. And so then I would have a bitter death and take, take that rank two in bitter. Now that said, I could also have found myself in a scenario where I, for some reason, decide to try and hold back this tide while the two of you get away. Do I then take a devoted death? Oh. And then my advancement is related to devoted rather than bitter. Am I completely <laughs> consumed by magical fire and I decide to take a, a rank in elemental? I So just everything about what's happening in play, be it my choice or circumstantial, yeah is going to define what that character advancement is. And then you're going to take a rank to trait or rank to lesson. So it's a permanent thing that's happening as well as um, 
uh, you, as advancements go on, you'll take certain rank traits as well. So then you're adding those into your um, deck and the other advancement pieces that sometimes you'll be able to replace cards. So basically there's fives as well. So we've talked about twos, threes, fours, and there are fives. So basically you could swap a two for a five permanently making your deck strong. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, interesting. So, because I, I wasn't thinking about that before, like you you level up into other schools as well. So then you're effectively possibly. multi-classing possibly. Mm -hmm. But your first death is always the one that defines you the most because you have those three core yeah. cards that can't be changed, but then you could certainly take lessons. And that's kind of why they're described that way um, from other schools. Oh, that's wild. I like that. Uh, so, so it sounds like the advancement is doesn't have an effect on the narrative. The narrative affects the advancement completely. Yes. Um, a little, a, a little bit of both though, because remember what you also then do have to talk through is what your crucible experience is like. In oh, that oh, that's yeah. right. The crucible. Because then what is your, what is your mentor doing? What are you learning? How long was it? What do you look like when you're coming back out of the crucible after this death? Do I have that devoted death? And now I come out and I am a teenager. Um, I, I'm no longer present as a child. Am I more armored because I chose devoted or durant? Um, I felt like I wasn't strong enough. There's a different direction I could go. So then uh, an armored teenager comes out. But obviously, intrinsically, we're all attached as a wing. You would know without a shadow of a doubt that it's me. Mm -hmm. My axe did get bigger. It's still taller than me because, of course, it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, so th it plays back and forth. The narrative dictates that mechanical advancement as well as that advancement would then dictate narratively what's happening in the crucible and who you are and how you present. Wow. That, that just blew my mind. <laughs> It's such a good game. Like I, I want to play more of it. Yeah, no, it sounds really fun. Uh, it's 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 wild because it's like the advancement feels like it's the the crux of play, right? Mm -hmm. it, it feels like that's what you're kind of ultimately working towards. In not like a oh, I I leveled up and now I'm now I'm level fifteen in Dungeons and Dragons. Now I get some sweet stuff, right? This is like a you're you're working towards both success and death at the same time. Yeah. Yep. Which is just amazing. But it rewards death in a cool way that not very many games do. Yeah. Um that like there's not that same fear of player death. Yeah. And and you said you can only die seven times or you can only yeah after your seventh so death. Yeah, so basically rank seven is the highest rank. So you start out as rank one because you have died one time. Yep. You could die seven times total, making you rank seven. And if you were to die an eighth time, your character would just go away. Interesting. And then and you could certainly come back as another character. Um, it could even be um, like a different person attached to that flame that is is basically igniting you as a phoenix. Um, and you could certainly just have a rank one character in the party. I mean, they're still effective. Um, it's just and they would be much more willing to die than your rank seven character. Probably. That's true. It, it, it feels like an interesting curve of uh, like just plain to the pedal pedals to the metal right mm -hmm. at first and then once you get to rank six or so you're you're probably going to be a lot more cautious yeah and so some of the highest ranked um phoenixes are stay there at pyre and never go anywhere mm -hmm. because they're so their level of power is so valuable and then figuring out like they can do stuff but then yeah like you said they're much more conservative because they don't want to die and then now all that power they hold is gone exactly oh that's interesting Hmm. Well, is is there anything else that we can say about this game then before we wrap things up? We it seems like we covered everything already. Yeah, keep an eye out. See if they have a, if they have a swinging deal, definitely buy Phoenix Dawn Command. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's it's worth it. Yeah, I know. Worth it. I know. I got mine. Uh, what Black Friday uh, last year. Yeah, they had and, a great deal on Black Friday. So. And uh, yeah, it was it was fantastic. It, it took a while because the website was having issues, but um, I tried later that evening and it worked uh, for myself. So I, I kind of lucked out there. Um, and I think they even extended the deal because of all the website issues uh, mm -hmm. for a little bit. So 
uh stay stay tuned for that uh we'll probably we'll definitely have a link to uh where you can buy this from um if you if you don't want to wait but it's uh this sounds pretty fantastic well neil thank you so much for joining us to talk about phoenix dawn command uh this was awesome well no thank you i mean it was no it was uh, no trolling it was definitely <laughs> definitely yeah. something that, for serious you meant it <laughs> uh, for serious i totally meant it but it was of course something that the logistics uh the logistics of it are a bit much yeah i would also think like even to try and do like there is a deep desire in my soul to do an actual play of phoenix but the idea um and the reality of that is tough unless everyone was physically at the same table yeah yeah absolutely it could be done but it would be a lot of work for sure yeah, yeah. i I'm I'm just really happy that after uh what three years or so we were finally mm-hmm. able to to take care of this uh this system and learn it and uh and I can't be more thrilled. This was really fun. It was, absolutely. Yeah. Uh can you go ahead and remind everyone uh where they can find you online and the sorts of things that you're working on? Of course, you can always find me at Joke Maniac on Twitter, uh, Jack of All Trades, Master of None, IAC. And of course, yeah, if you do want to check out the sup- fifth edition supplement to die for, the ultimate guide to hair, you can head over to Drive Through RPG um, and check it out there. Awesome. Well, thank you for sitting down with us. And thank you to everyone for listening. Call to action. Yeah, like that. And that wraps up our Phoenix Dawn Command series. We are really glad you could come along with us for this journey. It was a fantastic game, and I had a lot of fun learning about it. Before we pack up this series and get to those outtakes, we just have a few reminders. First up, you can pick up your own copy of Chimera, the game I've been working on with the very talented Amor Amaraz. Just head on to over to play.chimera.games and check that out. It is a really fun time, and I'd love to see more folks pick it up so we can make the game even better before we get to the Kickstarter. Links to that, as well as the two actual play streams, are in the show notes. Also, check out Losers A Love Story on the Ahura Borealis podcast feed right here on the One Shot Network. It is such a good story with some amazing themes going on, but it's also scary as heck, so pay attention to those content warnings. If you like what we're doing here or over or over at AHB or what the rest of the network is doing, you can help us out by contributing to our network Patreon. Head to patreon.com slash one shot podcast to sign up, which helps keep this podcast and many others going strong. At the $5 and up level, you'll get access to the Sacred Archive too, which is going to be getting much more enticing soon now that most of the burnout from the last year or so is starting to simmer down a bit, it feels. So absolutely check that out. Finally, another great thing you can do to help us out is leaving a rating and review anywhere you are able to do so. Every single one helps, and every one of the five-star reviews we will read right here once Amelia and I are able to record these together. For now, we're going to be packing things up to get you off to the credits, the show blurbs, and of course the outtakes. Thanks for sticking with us, everyone. Take care, stay safe, and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. 
Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you will find other great shows like Modifier. Modifier is an interview show hosted by Megan Dornbrock, all about why and how people change games. From the hobbyist to the professional, from house rules to publication, we all have in mind a better way to play. What's yours? Of course, my air conditioning kicks on right then, too. (laughs) I'm just going to be quiet for and a second have a so you can have woo a little bit of that too. Maybe. Oh my God, dog. Oh <laughs> <laughs> I was also ready for you to just say, we also we, still have no idea what we're doing, then. but we're just trying this out oh instead. Because that's how I my often My kids aren't feel. even home. I know. <laughs> I like that you are just like so confident and that like, well, it was actually, you know, it would have been like to later. It's like series seven. It was series seven. It was the Headspace series with uh, Senda and Phil. Clearly. Because Senda's the one that taught us it. Oh, okay. Yeah. It makes sense because, uh, you know, I always hear them do a clicky in their outtakes and for Pandas Talking Games. And then we're like, oh, you just click record whenever you want and we'll line it up. And Senda was like, no, no, please no. It, I found it incredibly stressful. But let, let me teach you something. And then we did it that way and it was phenomenal. And ever since. Almost like people sync their audio somehow for some reason because we weren't doing anything. No. That's we, the thing is had, like some people like clap or they do the like one, two, three. Four. Ryan didn't do anything. He was just like, everybody click and I'll figure it out later. I lined it up with the waveforms of the backup audio. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've, done, I've done that before when you have enough tracks. The other one, I don't do much anymore um, because usually a lot of the guests will be on Zoom. Mm-hmm. So then Zoom will auto sync their own tracks. And then I just grab mine or whoever else is. I, I'm So you may, this may be cyclical. I'm just throwing it out there. You make it to a point on the other end where you're like, nah, this, this isn't worth it. Just do whatever you want, <laughs> which is where I am. So I think it depends fine. on how many people you have too. Like mm-hmm. I know when, yeah. when just Jude and I record, oh, yeah. I don't do anything because it's like yeah. I can figure out like, when he's quiet and I'm not, like, these should be the mm-hmm. opposite. But otherwise, I have to do something. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just uh, tearing my book apart right now because it's... Yeah, I was uh, just flipping mine. Mine is not. Like, mine's good. It's good, good page you, turning. Oh, yeah, look at that. Did you get yours a while ago, or was yours part of that sale? No, Black Friday. No, that's part of that Black Friday thing. Oh, yeah, mine too. Oh, I just all the tops of the pages, like halfway through the book, are just all gnarly and stuck yeah. together. I had that on one of mine as well. Small printing snafu. It's okay. Ugh, I keep getting tagged in things on Discord, and it's really to put it on. Do not disturb over here. I'm permanently on do, do not disturb in Discord because of all the bling. Um, it, w- it would be fine. Except I'm in the Sounds Like Crows Discord. Um, and Caleb left for the weekend and announced that he was leaving, which means that Cameron decided he was in charge and has started the Cameron Games. And right now it's like this elaborate game of mafia and then like... Ooh. 
there's also a witch and some people are high value targets and you just tag people and then vote whether you want to murder them. It's I don't really understand what's happening, but I think I just got murdered while we were recording. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, they yeah, probably so don't that. leave other people in charge of your Discord servers if you go on vacation. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. He like mm-hmm. broke everyone up into teams. <laughs> like it was it's very intense. You might you might get murdered. Yeah. Virtually. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Which means my team lost several points because I got a text this morning that I was a high value target, apparently. Oh, no. So but not All a right. witch, which was a bummer. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, I, we're going to take a brief interlude of a story that I have to tell because I feel like I've told it to you before. It's very possible, Ryan, yeah. But if not, I need to say it again. <laughs> so when I was – quick story. When I was a young child, somehow I, I started watching Beast Wars, mm. the Transformers, um, and it was on UPN. And I was oh, literally UPN. waking up – yeah, I was waking up before at 6 a.m. Yeah. before the school to watch it. And then the series ended. But I was so used to waking up at that time that I just kept watching it. And because of that, I watched the entirety of the Sailor Moon series. Because yes. it was the only thing on that was at that time. <laughs> so I'm a very kindred spirit. And every time you bring it up, it just like unlocks this weird piece <laughs> of my brain that is like, oh, yeah, dude, you watched all of that and i'm like oh yeah mirror mirror yeah of course it is and i'm just like why is that in-? i always forget why it's in there because yeah. i like it just stays in this special little sailor moon place in my brain mm-hmm. where i'm like oh yeah i watched that entire series like as it was coming out yep. or not as it was coming out but on air yeah. i was trying I- to explain this concept to my children recently of like saturday morning cartoons mm-hmm. of like you got up on a saturday because your show was on in the morning yeah. and that's the only time that it was, you know, and you had to like watch that particular channel on that particular time. And they were just like, cause they didn't have DVRs. Didn't understand. Yeah. Like no. you can't just watch whatever you want, whenever you want. And DVRs like, and streaming killed Saturday morning cartoons there. Oh, I yeah. said it. Yeah. Well, yeah. But here's close. the thing is like, now they can be Saturday afternoon cartoons. And I think that that's, but, like, I'm jealous, honestly. Yeah. I didn't have to be getting up at 7 a.m. on a Saturday. I or 5 a.m. on a weekday. Right. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, when when DVR replaced VCR, that was the death. Because you theoretically, you could tape it. True. Mm-hmm. If you had a friend, I guess. And if, yeah, if you were willing setup. to program your VCR and uh-huh. it was hooked up to the t- Yeah, mm-hmm. Now, see, I am currently now halfway through the 200 episodes of the original Sailor Moon series, mm-hmm. uh, redubbed by Viz Media instead of Dick Media, um, okay. and uh, through Hulu, and it is uh, beyond better than I remember. Okay, I got so I I genuinely got uncomfortable with that start that sentence. Like I felt it in my my heart i was like uh redub it could go either way ryan tell me more it's it's Um, it's so much better to the original translation so like all the stuff that they centered in the dick version uh is now just like direct translated from the japanese version so like um now ryan's gonna make me rewatch it okay it's it's good it's on hulu yep check it out okay so i will jump us back in because that was entirely my fault (laughs) I am recording. My recording is also happening. Yay! Welcome to the future. Or the past. I don't know. Whoever's listening to this. Well, it'll be the past by the time people listen to it. Right now it's the present. It is currently happening. But by the time people listen to it, it is. Technically for each of us, it's also the past. It is the past. Because it has to go over the internet a little bit. True, true, true. Oh, my brain hurts. Time is meaningless. Time is meaningless. Come on. There's anything we've learned in the last year. Special relativity. <laughs> Curse your <laughs> science. This is probably going to yes. be the, the most amount of silence we've had in character creation as we <laughs> <laughs> as we read all of these to ourselves. Because yep. this is literally the first time I'm seeing any of these cards. Yeah. So I, I have no idea what's in here. Oh, hello. Let me down so I can cause chaos. Yeah, pretty much. No. Hey. 
like, I know, see, but I let you out because you sounded sad. But you're gonna make me regret it. Cause I'm gonna spend the whole time saying no. And then you're gonna act like it's my fault because now you have this ridiculous haircut and a ridiculous dress on. Which is <laughs> like, fair enough, you have a right to cause chaos when people do that to you. Hey, it's a puppy. It is a puppy. Is that a different puppy? <laughs> no, it's the same one. What happened? <laughs> she got what, haircut. What happened? <laughs> um, no, because she was supposed to. Ooh. She was supposed to go to the groomer back in January, uh, but my groomer broke her leg, mm. and then we had to move. And you know, then I've had my carpal tunnel and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So she finally went yesterday. Um, hey. Uh, but because of that, she was super matted because she's a poodle mix. So um, they had to like cut her hair way, way down. She's so much less floofy. And poor baby is like bald now. Aww. Um, but <laughs> her fur is not in front of her eyes. The other day when I tried to play fetch with her, she couldn't find the ball because she couldn't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> I felt really bad. Oh, poor thing. I'm going to go put her away real quick, though. I thought maybe she would behave, but I don't think she's going to. I don't know why I thought that. I don't know why I thought a <laughs> nine-month-old puppy would be able to do anything. But I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Peggy! She Peggy, looks like Peggy. a completely different dog now. I almost thought it was a greyhound at first. What was that? I almost thought it looked like a greyhound. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna try and face the microphone while I talk. It's a new and exciting thing I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there's a train. I thought it was gone, but but it came back. <laughs> All right, maybe it's a different train. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> um. And we can go ahead and stop this recording. Uh, for this episode. Uh, stop. I am recording. My recording is also recording. All right. Multiple recordings. Simultaneous podcasting. All right. You're, you're snoofing into the microphone. <laughs> Everybody can hear it. Okay. Oh, Peggy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll give us a five count of hopefully silence. Hey, no, good. good. <laughs> and we'll get going. Okay. Here we go. Of course, my air conditioning kicks on right then, too. So <laughs> I'm just going to be quiet for a second so you can have a little bit of that, too. Maybe. Oh, my God, dog. <laughs> 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 Time for some quiet squeak, squeak. It's a little background noise. Oh my god, my kids aren't even home. I know. <laughs> okay. It looks like all of the Kickstarters that we have been talking about are now over and fully funded, with uh, lots of amazing stretch goals unlocked for all mm -hmm. of them. Oh my god, dog! I'm so sorry. <laughs> go on, get, go on. Come here so I can pet you so that you'll be quiet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's a few clicks here and okay. there. It's fine. She's got like 10 of them. So if I take it away, she's just going to go find another one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come here. Come here. <sighs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, get off get. I thought you could behave You were asleep until we started recording <laughs> Okay uh, My dog scrolled on my thing too This is just a mess today I'm Sorry uh, Scrolling down oh, Dog e. I did it Me too Woo. Yeah. That's the good news is it's not my mousing hand that's oh. good. You've had to conform to the 
the right the right righty pop propaganda i have i have i've learned to right-handed mouse yeah uh, it's just my everything else hand mm-hmm. <laughs> okay outline oh i'm on the wrong outline that would help i'm i'm on i was on the outline for next week's episode Oh, yeah, I got to look up for that and see if there's stuff I want to add. I was going to be all prepared for this one and reread the rules and do all kinds of stuff. And then I didn't. No, that's that's understandable. (laughs) I had some (laughs) stuff going. (laughs) There's there's a few other things going on. Oh, my God. I scared the crap out of my children um, because I went to take the dog out and then came back with, like, blood everywhere. Wounds. Yeah. I went to go drop them off with Dan's parents today, and his mom goes, oh, you really did hurt yourself. And I was like, lady, I called you to come pick up my kids so I could take them to the emergency room. You saw me right after it happened when there was still blood on my face. Like, what did you think happened? Like, yes. Yes, I did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like what? Did you... Like my finger was pointing the wrong way in a way that fingers don't bend. No, we don't like that. I know. I, I did not either. Let me tell you. They had to like give you shots with like the numbing stuff, and my dad was the one that mm-hmm. took me to the emergency room, and he doesn't do well with needles. And it, like I got, they also decided to give me a tetanus shot too, which means I got poked five different times, and the whole time he was like. Ugh. Uh, uh. I'm like, who broke their fingers here? And not you. <laughs> Settle down. <laughs> Seriously. <sighs> anyway. Anyway. All right. So I am on on uh, starting duty. Yeah, that's what you. That's what you put. That's mm-hmm. why I didn't intend to. I think I intended to swap it because uh, usually that's what we, we normally off. do. Too late now. Uh, what? What do you mean? It's too late now. Well, because then you have me talking. Ryan, and then Ryan, and then just leave it the way it is. Let's go. Fine. All right. Well, we'll we'll do it. My hand really hurts. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> I want to take pain meds. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, we'll do a five count of silence again, uh, and then we will uh, we'll get started. All right. Here come the fingers. Okay. All right. Uh, mm-hmm. We can go ahead and stop that one then. This is up.